Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about PS3 emulation, PS2 emulation, and LaunchBox. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about PlayStation 3 emulation with RPCS3. Today, RPCS3 announced it's finally compatible with Mac. If we take a quick peek at the download page on the official RPCS3 website and scroll down just a little bit, we can see macOS sitting right beside Linux and Windows. And it says here it supports M1 and Intel Macs with dedicated graphics on macOS 11.6 or later. If by chance you want to see a bunch of comparisons of RPCS3 running on Mac computers, I'll leave a link to RPCS3's official video in the description below. It is definitely worth checking out. As for game compatibility, things might be hit and miss. I mean, this is a brand new release. Just stay patient. If something's not working for you, chances are it's going to get better. Additionally here, if you're trying to use RPCS3 on Mac, there are some things you should know about. At this point in time, there is no current support for Nvidia GPUs. This might change in the future. Only PlayStation controllers are currently supported. Random crash when disconnecting controller with Mac OS 12, especially over Bluetooth, wired is recommended. Personally, I think this is a huge win for the RPCS3 team and a huge win for emulation in general. It's also kind of amusing that you can play PS3 on Mac, Windows, and Linux before you can on PS5. Next up, we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation on Android with Aether SX2. Aether SX2 just got another update. We're going to go over these changes at a pretty high level. If you want to see them in detail, I'll leave a link to their Patreon page in the description below. Definitely check it out. There is a lot of great information here. The first part in this update is a very interesting and unfortunate PSA. They say we're sad to report that some people in the community have been attempting to sell Aether SX2 or combine it with front ends with ads. I haven't heard about this one yet. If you know about it, let me know in the comments below because I'm very curious to find out. Uh, they state Aether SX2 will always be free. If you have been forced to pay for it or watch ads to play games, you should get your money back. That is very interesting. Aether SX2 is available right on the Google Play Store. I am wondering who now is trying to sell it. But moving on to the updates, and they've added in input profiles. If you want to have custom touchscreen layouts per game or custom controller layouts per game, you absolutely can. Now, I'm not sure what the limit is to how many profiles you can have, but it looks like it's suggested here to have one maybe for fighting games, one for racing games, one for rhythm games, and so on and so forth. Next up here, they've extended the affinity control to software renderer threads. So if you're looking for a performance increase, well, here might be your answer. If you are using a software renderer, this may vary from device to device and also game to game, but you can tinker around in here and see if something works for you. There's also a number of different bug fixes. This first fix here helps out performance if you were using the Affinity Control. Apparently on some devices, the GS thread here was pinned to the wrong core, and that should now be fixed, resulting in increased performance. They've also fixed the screen rotation, which sometimes triggered an emulation restart uh, on the Pixel 6, but they don't know what other devices this happened to. It shouldn't happen at all now. If you've got a Mali device, there were some fixes that help out some broken graphics, specifically in Ratchet 3 and Final Fantasy 12. And continuing on with Mali here, there's even more improvements, but only if you've got a recent GPU driver. R32 Plus, and you can check that under the Advanced tab within Aether SX2. If you do have a recent driver, you'll probably notice a pretty big performance gain. We've also got some graphical improvements. Decompressed DXT BPTC textures when not natively supported. Fix FXAA on GLES. And also implement Shade Boost for all renderers. Under the Graphics tab in the Settings menu, if you check off Shade Boost, you can adjust the brightness, contrast, and saturation. This should hopefully help you out and make some games maybe a little bit better looking. Resync with Upstream. For those who don't know, Upstream is PCSX2, so they pulled in the latest changes from PCSX2, which also includes automatic GS hardware fixes which helps optimize things on a per game basis. Remove x86 emitter entirely from ARM64 builds. Most of you probably already knew this, but Aether SX2 does not support 32-bit devices. And that is mostly because 32-bit devices are not powerful enough to run PS2 games. You could try to optimize the emulator all you want, 
but at the end of the day, 32-bit devices just don't have the processing power to handle it. It's unfortunate, but that is the way it is. And based on this update here, it doesn't look like Aether SX2 will ever support 32-bit devices. The last thing here is minor render improvements. If you've got a Mali GPU, you're gonna like this one. There's a brand new no full barriers mode, which is now the default. So it's kind of a middle ground here between Direct 3D and OpenGL style blending. It should hopefully help out performance for you. And a friendly reminder here, if you are updating Aether SX2, just make sure to reset your settings. You can do that from the main menu. Sometimes if you don't reset your settings, things don't work just right. There might be a new feature and it's just not working for you or something else is broken in the process. So reset your settings and then set everything back up and you should be good to go. Aether SX2 keeps getting better and better and it's still technically in beta. I can't wait to see what's next. Last up here, we're talking about LaunchBox, specifically LaunchBox for Android. LaunchBox for Android was just updated to version 1.1. It's not available in the Google Play Store. You will have to download the APK manually and you can do it right from the website. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. There's a free version of it and there's also a paid version of it. For those who don't know what LaunchBox is, at a high level here, it's a front end for your emulation needs. It'll organize your ROMs, automatically launch your emulators and make your whole experience a heck of a lot better. If you wanna see every change in detail and in action, I'll leave a link to a video in the description below and check it out, it's by ETA Prime. At a high level here, this new version lets you control the media and metadata per game. If you've imported a game and things aren't looking right, you can change up the pictures. If the title is wrong, if some other things are wrong, you can go into the metadata of your ROM and change it. Additionally, and this applies to a lot of arcade games out there, if you've imported some arcade games and you have a specific version, you can add in that very specific version to make launching it a lot easier. On top of that, they've improved customization even more here by adding in platform videos, and you can completely change them if you want. I'm a big fan of LaunchBox. I was excited when LaunchBox came back to Android, and I'm even more excited now that they're paying attention to it and making it even better. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts on anything we talked about today in the comments below, whether it was RPCS3 on Mac, Aether SX2 improving yet again, or the LaunchBox updates. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.